Welcome to Highline Excel class number 33. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook, Week 7, Business 214. If you're in the class, just go to our Week 7 website. Hey, exciting topic here. We are going to be credit analysts in an account receivable department. And we have to analyze customers and determine if our business is going to extend credit. Now down below here we have a table with our customers and then a bunch of columns with criteria that we'll use to determine whether we should extend credit. At the top here I have the two rules and then the uh, hurdles and criteria for and formula inputs for our formulas. Now here's rule number one for this business. The account has to not be suspended and it has to have no overdue balance and last year's sales have to be greater than fifty thousand we'll actually do greater than or equal to right so if there's three logical tests and all must come out true in order to extend credit we'll use the and a n d function a n d function will take one two three tests if they all come out true it'll tell us true rule number two account not suspended and both credit hurdles, we have two credit uh, agencies that give us ratings. And this one has a range from 0 to 5. This one has a range from 0 to 9. And so our cutoff is 2.5 for this rating 1 and 4.5 for rating 2. So this rule 2, account not suspended and both and both credit. When you, see the, when you hear the word both, you immediately think and. And both of these have to be passed. So really the first part of rule tool is one, two, three things have to be met. All of them, all three of them. True, true, true. So we'll use an and for that. But the, watch this. This is the second part of it. Account not spend on both credit hurdles must be met. And, oh, we have another and. At least one of the remaining cr criteria must be met. So we have asset value, last year's sales, and whether or not the account is overdue when you hear when you hear at least one you immediately think or when you say at least one it means the lowest it can come out is one so since we have three tests three remaining tests we also for rule number two have to have one of these come out to be true but watch this when it says at least one if this comes out true false false then we get a true for the whole thing because at least one of them. But what if this one comes out true and this one comes out true, but this comes out false? Still, it's at least one. Two is bigger than one, so that's okay. And if all three come out true, it meets this criteria at least one. Whenever you see at least one, whether it's in this class or statistics or whatever writing, it always means or one of them has to pass it. Pass uh, One of these tests have to be met and come out true. All right, let's scroll down here and look at our setup. Okay, we have our customers, and then whether or not the account is suspended, uh, rating one, rating two, asset value, last year's sales, and overdue, yes for if it's overdue, and blank if it's not overdue. Now I'm going to scroll over one because we don't need this first column. And I'm going to try and scroll up and uh, see the criteria because we're actually going to use this criteria. Right now I squished everything down here so we can fit everything on the screen. Here it is, rule number one. Count not suspended and no overdue balance and last year's sales greater than 50,000. So we're going to use and equals and. And by the way, in this class we talked about and and or and if and logical functions back in, I think it was week two. So this is uh, extending on what we talked about earlier and I actually have those notes from earlier here. All right, and. Oh yeah, we have to say this cell for this customer is not yes because if it's not suspended that means it would not say yes here when it says yes then um, it is suspended now what is the symbol for not well we looked at that earlier we saw things like equal and greater than but we also remember that not is less than and then a greater than symbol together now we're going to click on this criteria here and lock it going down f4 f4 that's the first logical test, comma. Then we have to uh, say no overdue balance. So we're going to click here, and that has to, that's a not also, not. And I'm going to click on this, an F4, F4. 
That's our second true-false test, comma, and our third true-false test, last year sales, relative cell reference, is greater than or equal to our um, the sales from our hurdle up there. And I'm going to lock this. And that's it, three logical tests inside of an AND. All three of them have to come out to be true in order for AND to deliver a true to the cell. Control Enter, and then I'm going to click and drag it down. All right, I guess times are tough. We have a lot, whoops. We have one true here, and we can see uh, there's no yes there, there's no yes there, and last year's sales are greater than 90. Oh, this one, there's no yes there, it's greater than a hurdle, but oh, the account was suspended. All of them are met here. Um, here we have a yes. A 58 and a yes, so these two, this is the only one that came out true. Nevertheless, we see it's a bunch of falses. Here's a true. Uh, we have no yes there. That's not yes either, and that is greater than 62,000. All right, so that's rule number one. Now on to rule number two, which is going to be a little bit more complicated. I'm going to uh, right-click this H, the column header, and point to hide. We need some a breathing room here. I'll scroll up, see if we can't get our criteria. There we go. Now let's think about this. Uh, rule number two, account not suspended, oh yeah, that, and both credit hurdles, so these two, oh yeah, so all three of the first rules have to come out true, so we use an and for and put all three of these tests, and then let's read the rest. Both credit hurdles must be met, and at least one of the remaining criteria. Oh yeah, so we have this, this, and this, and we can have any one of these uh, one or greater, and we can get a true for all of these matched with the true from this, this, and this will give us a true for rule number two. Now, the trick here is we have three tests that are going to be inside of an and, and then three tests that are inside of an or, and this or and this and themselves have to be in an and. You can see the word and there, right? So we have three criteria and then this, this at least thing. All right, so you ready? equals and. Okay, that's the first and. Inside of this, there's a logical test right there and there. This is going to be an and. This is going to be an or. So I'm going to do and. And now I'm going to say, is that not yes? And lock it going down with the F4 key. Comma, is this uh, relative cell reference for this customer hurdle 1 greater than or equal to, I'm sorry, the rating for this customer, is it greater than or equal to our hurdle? And then I'm going to hit the F4 key to lock it going down. Comma, and notice our and, it's, we're on our second logical, comma. Now we're on our third logical. This hurdle, I mean this, oh, that's, that label is incorrect there. That's what's throwing me off here. All right, so I fixed that. That shouldn't have said hurdle. This is just the customer's uh, rating, and up here is the hurdle. All right, so we're back to our and. Oh yeah, we have to test this one. Is the customer's rating from this agency greater than or equal to our hurdle? And that's going to be locked going down, F4, F4. Now watch this, this screen tip right here, where it shows us that we have three logicals. I'm going to close parentheses. And now look, I'm back to this AND. So this AND, even though it's inside of the AND, is only delivering a true or false for the first argument of the first AND. Now we do a comma, and now the second logical is going to be our OR. So OR, and now the screen tip helps us out. These screen tips are very helpful when you're doing big formulas. Now we have to ask, is the customer's asset value greater than or equal to the hurdle, F4, F4, comma, Last year sales greater than or equal to the hurdle, F4, F4. Now we're uh, to our second. Now we need we have three inside of our or. So here's the third one. And this is not equal to whatever's in that cell, which is uh, at this time yes. And I locked it with the F4 key. Now watch the screen tip when I close parentheses here. Watch the screen tip, close parentheses. Now it goes back to the and, right? Screen tips, big formulas, wow, are they helpful. Close parentheses and control enter. Now I'm going to double click and send it down. I guess I'm not going to double click and send it down. And there we have, uh, for customer one, it came out true. And why? Because at least one of these came out 
to be true, and all three of these came out to be true. Let's look at this false, right? So there, oh, this one right here, because our hurdle is 4.5, so certainly the and had to get true, 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 and it didn't there. And, uh, oh, but all of these came out to be true. But nevertheless, rule number two gives us a false. How about down here? True. Now, uh, here, let's F2. I should have done that before. F2, I want to verify that, sure enough, all of the cell references there got locked, and all of the ones here got locked. I mean, uh, were not locked, were relative. And look at this. Pass the test, pass the test, pass the test. And even though this one didn't pass the test, these other two did, so the or for this delivers a true. All right, so there we have rule number one and two. Now, we want to, I'm going to unhide these. Right click, unhide, and uh, scroll the size down. We want to talk about something called none and only. Now, none, what that means is the customer failed both rules. And the way that comes out is if they get a false for rule number one and a false for number, rule number two. But how do we make a formula that will tell us true when none of the tests have been met? And we only have two of them here, right? Sometimes you have multiple rules or many columns with trues and falses. And you want a quick, easy way to do none. Well, let's think about this. If this is false and this is false, we want a true here. Let's look at an or, equals or. And I'm going to start it right here just to make it easy on understanding. What if I do this right now? Oh, well, first off, the or. So you don't just have to put a logical test. You can highlight cells that have trues and falses. So that's an important point. But what is or going to do when it sees two falses? It's going to come out false, because at least one of them has to be true. So I'm going to control enter, but that's not what I want. I actually want it to say true when I get both falses. I'm going to hit F2. Well, there's something called the not, N-O-T function. And all the not function does is turn a false to true and a true to false. So I'm going to close parentheses on that not and control enter. And there I have it. The trues mean, <coughs> excuse me, the trues mean this customer had none of the tests. They failed both. So we have a few of these uh, customers that failed both. One, two, three. The other construct is only. And this happens when you have, uh, you want to ask if everything came out false, but there was one thing that came out true. So asset hurdle. We want to ask here, we want to say, hey, did the customer fail both tests, um, but the asset test was met? So really, amongst all the tests, we want to say, Hey, if all the others were false, but the asset hurdle was met, we maybe want to take a second look. So guess what? We're going to use our uh, none construct inside of an and. So we'll say and, and it'll look at the none, which look at this. Only, it says two rules are false, which would be a true, right? Because we, we did our uh, not or. So two rules are false. We want a true. And then we just simply do a second test only on the asset. And that'll give us our uh, only. So you ready? Equals and. And we could just click right there. But I'm going to do this again just for practice. Because a not and then an or, that is the construct for none. And I'm going to highlight those two right there close parentheses, close parentheses on the not. Notice how these screen tips are very important. That's the logical test, uh, first logical test for and. Now I type a comma. And now for this customer, I'm going to click on the asset value, very carefully making sure I'm in the same row because I'm building the formula in the middle. Is that greater than or equal to whatever the hurdle is? That one right there, and I'll hit the F4 key. Close parentheses. Um, and that will work. That is our close parentheses on the and, and that is the only. It's saying, hey, are all the rules, we, we, the two, first two rules, we got false, false. But then please relook at this one again. So only that one was passed. 
So we were asking two rules. Did they both come out false? But what about this other one? All right. Um, and if we uh, go and look, maybe uh, that would lead us to a, a customer that we might want to reconsider. Let's look at this customer right here. So we have um, this one over here. So we had, oh, count suspended, forget that. And then what was the other one? This one, true. If the accounts are suspended, forget it. Well, let's go look at this one, because this came out true. This is the only one we're looking at. So, OK, there's uh, yes, no yes, and no yes. Oh, but look at this. They were just w a little bit under there, a little bit under there, which uh, means they failed the, the the two tests. But look at this, asset, huge. So maybe we'd reconsider there. Now, one last thing. After all these amazingly cool ors and ands and nots, we want to do um, a decision rule. We want a formula that will tell us accept this customer, um, take a second look, or outright reject. Now, I want to get these two rules, the formulas we built. I want to copy both of them so we don't have to re enter them and then paste them in the middle of an if. Now, one good way to do this is go back to uh, the formulas and we need to look for the clipboard the clipboard is under home and right there now I'm gonna open the clipboard and show you something about the clipboard I'm gonna clear all down here under options there is if I move this up a little bit down under options you can see show office clipboard when you hit control CC and that CC is a keyboard shortcut from earlier version. So I always like to come down here and show this. That means if you're copying a bunch of things and you want to collect them on the clipboard, you can just hit Control CC. And not only does it copy the item, but it opens up the clipboard. So let's try it. I have it um, turned on there. Now here, what we want is this. Because if we're going to use some if functions to put in the cell accept, uh, take a second look or reject. We actually want those words, so we're going to use the if function. This thing just delivers a true and false, so we can copy it and paste it into the logical test for the if. So I'm going to control CC, and it's got that one there. I'm going to click escape, and then I'm going to come here very carefully in edit mode, scoop this out and copy it, except for the equal sign, control C. So now this is the rule one, this is rule two. Now we simply scroll over here. Oh, very important. Hit escape. Because if I start doing something over there, I wreck that formula. All right, here's our decision. Equals if. And so our boss, we're, we're making the spreadsheet right here. And our boss said, hey, if rule two comes out true, then we're automatically going to accept them. However, if r rule number one comes out true, but the first one, the rule number two is false, we want to take a second look. Otherwise, if both of them come out false, then we want to just outright reject them. All right. So the first logical test is going to be for our if. Oh yeah, rule number two. So there's rule number two. I'm going to click on that. And sure enough, it slaps it right in there. And notice, here's the screen tip. If, and it's just a logical test. We were not uh, good enough at making these big formulas to you know like just type this out in the if so we did it in another cell over there but now once we got it working over there we just paste it there type a comma and watch what happens to the screen tip now value of true oh in quotes except I have to be careful since I'm such a bad uh, speller here because uh, if you hard code a word like this into a formula spell check won't catch it unless you do it in edit mode like right here now, comma, the value of false. Oh, we need to do a second if, because we need that second test. So I'm going to type an if. And now we're uh, two ifs into it. And the logical test for this one is going to be this. This is the uh, rule number one. Then I'm going to type a comma. And it's asking me, hey, what do you want value of true? Now, in this one, we're going to end double quotes, take second look take second look now it wants its comma 
and then value of false. Now, the way an, a double if like this works is if it runs through rule number two and comes out true, then it puts that in. But if this comes out false, then this one takes over, right? So this one takes over. If the rule number one comes out true, then it's going to put this in the cell. Now, if this rule number two is false and then this one comes out false, now in this uh, value of false, we're telling the if function what to put in if both of these other ones come out false. And that is reject. Close parentheses and then control enter. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, close double quote. And then the screen tip says, hey, add, a, add another parentheses to close off that if. Oh, but you can see it's green, so this is still sitting here because we still have a, a, another if that we have to close off. And when I see that black parentheses, I know I've closed everything off. Now control enter and double click and send it down. So um, accept, accept, reject, reject because they both came out false. Take a second look. So now we're going to go over to, um, so because rule number one, the less stringent rule actually gave us a true, but the more stringent rule gave us a false. So now we're going to have to go re reconsider by hand or by, by our eye whether we want to extend credit to customer number three. Well, they met that one, so all of these are met. Oh, that one's 3.9, so that's the trouble spot. It's supposed to be 4.5, so we'd have to consider whether we wanted to uh, accept that customer. All right, well, that's pretty exciting. Uh, some, some big ifs with ands and ors and even uh, some none and uh, only constructs here. Let's see if I can leave that. So there we go. There's our big formula. And uh, we'll see you next class.